Dragon's Dogma 2 has launched and has been received with mostly negative reviews on Steam and there's a lot of upset folks on Twitter. It looks like a lot of the talk is revolving around the new microtransactions as well as the game's performance issues. Of course, we covered these performance problems fairly in depth in our review to give you guys a heads up. Many people have been asking for us to acknowledge everything that's going on. As we're passionate about your opinions and this new game, we wanted to have a chat about it and see what's up. A good thing to note is that we and likely many other content creators don't have prior knowledge on the game's microtransaction packages and weren't made aware by Capcom about what would be for sale. Now that the game is actually out and its various MTX bundles have come online, we can finally see what is going on. Just in case you guys didn't know, when press and content creators get games early, we play on a beta branch version of the game without any pre-order bonuses, microtransaction bundles, or day one patches, as they usually don't appear until the actual release day. So please don't shoot the messenger here, we're just covering the news as this is a big release and we see a lot of you interacting with it online. So with a lot of noise around the game's MTX, let's take a look. There's a bunch of different Rift Crystal packages with various amounts and the maximum one is 2500 RC for £4.45. There's a bunch of individual Wakestone packages you can buy for 89p each and various consumables with items like the makeshift jail key, Rift Incense, a harpy snare, a pendant to gift for affinity, some alternate music options and some of the most disliked ones include the special camping bundle that weighs less than normal, a port crystal, a rare item to set a specific fast travel point somewhere in the world, and the Art of Metamorphosis book to edit your character, the Arisen's appearance, or your pawns. I think it's important to say these microtransactions are kind of weird and out of place. However, to be fair, some of them are pretty negligible, with Rift Crystals, Wake Stones, and some of the consumables being pretty easy to get in-game without too much work. It seems like they're only really there for the lazy player that wants to skip a little bit of in-game time actually playing. Personally, a lot of these are things I would just not buy. However, the character edit, port crystal and special camping kit are a bit different. The community's response to this is quite interesting and it seems a lot of people sit in different camps on this one. For Mito, an amazing Monster Hunter gunner speedrunner, content creator and guide maker, actually kind of predicted this in 2023, so well done for Mito. Super Rad, another amazing content creator, agrees that it's dumb that they're selling these items in the first place, but sees that you can get these things in game with pretty minimal work. Others just flat out simply think there should not be microtransactions in a single player game that already has a pretty high price tag. The camping kit is something that especially intrigued me, given they are pretty heavy in game and this seems like a straight up quality of life bonus. But I wanted to know how good it actually is because they really sell it in the description of the package. They say gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in game. They're efficient without being unduly weighty. This camping kit is favoured by explorers travelling far afield. So I've bought this one to save you guys money and check out what is going on, and it literally is a pointless waste of money. This camping kit weighs 5.5 kg, which is less than a normal camping kit. However, if you go to the checkpoint rest town and go to this merchant and give him a jade stone or a forgery of it, you can instantly get an elite camping kit that is, well, straight up better and weighs less at 4 kg. You can do this pretty early game too, so this package in my opinion is pretty much rubbish. The port crystal however is something you are sort of limited on per run through the story. Supposedly you can get around 5 plus of these per run and personally I found 4 in my first playthrough without any knowledge or help. These make a massive difference because in the game's regular world, there is a very limited number of permanent teleport points, so these become super impactful for getting back to places easily. So this is an item I honestly think does have some impact, but again, isn't needed. It's just nice to have an extra one. However, we do find this package quite quirky because the game's director, Itsuno, has emphasized how fast travel is purposefully limited to encourage exploration. In an IGN interview, they asked Itsuno, the game's director, about fast travel travel in open world games specifically and why he's keen to avoid it. He said quote, just give it a try. Travel is boring. That's not true. It's only an issue if your game is boring. All you have to do is make travel fun. So again, it's a little odd that fast travel is a premium purchase item when the exploration is meant to be a core mechanic and a core part of the fun of the game, 
in the way that it is fundamentally designed, hence why you can't fast travel everywhere and the in-game ox cart system is limited on where they take you. The character edit book on the other hand is also interesting because many Capcom game veterans, such as many of us Monster Hunter players out there, have come to accept that character edits are a standard microtransaction in a lot of Capcom games similar to Monster Hunter. So this isn't a big shock to me and I'm sure to many other Monster Hunter players, but the difference is this is a single player only game. I will however say, you can just buy this book in-game for 500 RC, which isn't that hard to get. Interestingly though, you can buy 500 RC for 59 pence, while the book itself costs £1.70, which just doesn't make any sense at all as the prices really don't add up. We think they just shouldn't have done microtransactions at all, but if they were going to do them, we would have liked something interesting like more player or porn voices. So it seems most of these packages are pretty much not worth your money, given how you can get them in-game for free with really out too much trouble. However, it is still weird to see them as an option, especially considering the game's price tag. This coupled with the game's lacking performance and the amount of these MTX packages, even though they aren't as impactful as they first seem, is basically why there's mostly negative or now mixed reviews on Steam. Some of you will probably not care about these microtransactions given their price, but hopefully you can see why they are the current talk of the town, so to speak. Capcom have addressed this with a post on Steam, going over how the items are obtainable in-game, how they're looking to improve performance, performance and so on, so they have made a statement. We're really interested to know where exactly you guys stand on this one and how you think they should have handled things. What should they have done differently? What should they do now? And how can they change going forward? Tell us down below because we will be reading the comments. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.